is actually the content for our CAT 2 exams. So we are going to start off with the spark line for great presentations. That is how this particular uh, lecture is titled. And it is based on uh, Nancy Juret's beautiful strategy of creating a great fascination for your audience. I'm sure this particular lecture is going to be useful for you, not only in the context of your examination, but also in the context of your presentation. Because ultimately, the bottom line of all our presentations is to actually put it into action. Whatever discussion takes place in the class, the beauty of this course is to enable you to put it into action. So that is what I, I actually uh, incline to do in my presentation. So let us now discuss about what is a spark line. And by the end, I'm sure you will all create a, that kind of spark line that we are going to discuss. Having said that, I know that you might have already reflected or mulled very deeply on what kind of presentation you are going to give for your TED talk. I'm sure you would have planned. But after this lecture, I'm sure that it will help you to reflect more about how to actually structure your talk. Although we had similar lectures before, this lecture is very different because Nancy in her, uh, because she is a great public speaker, she is a trainer, she is an, you know, TED speaker and in her platform, her messages kind of resonates with the audience. So how can you deliver a message that can resonate with the audience is the essence of this talk. So let me share my content with you rather than bombarding you with information. Let me share, show you to reflect on it. Okay, let me present my uh, screen and take you to Nancy's uh, secrets. Yeah. So I hope you can see my screen, can't you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So delivering core message. Now we discussed so much about storytelling patterns earlier. Just first slide kind of reaffirms the logic that we discussed already. Okay, probably I can make it a little more big to look at the elements in it called the hero journey, hero's journey. So you are all going to give a TED talk, a five minute or a seven minute talk. And in your talk, you are the hero, right? And you are going to share your adventure. So it is going to be your journey. Then everyone have fascinating journeys, which are worth sharing. As you know, many of the TED Talks essence is ideas worth sharing is the motto. So Anna's life, there could definitely be, uh, you know, fascinating things that we can learn from her life. So Anna will be presenting about her journey. So essentially, the secret of great talks is an extension of your journey. So the hero is you. Okay. So the first thing, if you look at this cycle, the first thing is you actually, your presentations are actually a call of adventure where you don't describe but you narrate, which we discussed earlier. And it's like a kind of a story format. What happened in your life? What is the idea? Three, why is it worth sharing? Four, why is it transformational? Five, why is it going to be useful for the listener? Okay, in what way is it going to actually fine tune his ideas and make it make him or her better. And this is the purpose of sharing a journey. It's not about sharing a story that you know, or uh, sharing, sharing something that has really happened in your life that you think is fascinating. But your central message and your central story is only the ornament. But the real you is the message. And you will all be sharing your journey. 
and i see you as a hero i see you as a mentor in each one of your talks if four or few are going to deliver a talk in your class i see four core messages that i can take it in my life and apply it which can make my life better and that is how your talk should be structured and moving on let us keep this this structure in your mind okay am i make, making my point clear yes sir okay yashmita am i making myself clear to you okay i don't know if yashmita is still here all right she has texted sir okay yeah so because i am in screen sharing i couldn't see that parallelly now i am just giving you the essence of nancy's ideas this is how she puts it if i could draw a shape of the best presentation in the world this is what all the best presentations would look like okay maybe i'll show you a bigger image so that you will see how the best presentation will look like all the best presentations look like uh look like this i'll come to this figure a little later all the, your best talks all the best ted talks or great talks look like this let me explain to you what it means actually but before i do that this is called the spark line which means what the current situation is what is the world currently doing and what could they do better one point number one what is the current situation how could the situation be better how were people reacting to the situation how could they react better okay what is people's present level of understanding after your talk how could the understanding be better for example let us say you are uh, you know delivering a talk on on communication skills your talk should not be descriptive on the importance of communication probably you can talk about what people currently do to improve their communication but what is wrong in that why that idea will not work what could they do and you can say this is what you did to dramatically improve your communication and this is the normal structure of all profound talks what is the current situation okay and what can be done to make the situation better so you can start usually you can start your present situation by stating the current situation it could be either factual it could be historical event it could be related to scientific events for example let us say you deliver a talk on stress now this is why people usually get stressed this is how people react to stress these are the solutions that medical experts give to stress but do they work i am sure that it has not worked for me then what can be done to react to stress i am going to share a story which worked for me and i believe that it will work for you well because what i am saying is very practical what i am saying has not only worked for me but it is going to work for you as well so this is called the spark line so please model your talks based on the spark line structure point number 1 what is the current state of affairs what could be even better the current situation be even better this is called spark line of a great presentation moving on okay now let me kind of uh reinforce what i already said see i have already told you if you look at this graph what is what could be done but between what is and what could be done there is a gap what is this gap this is a gap where people have not implemented this idea friends please understand your talk should be focused on an idea which is new an idea which has not been shared already and this is the second point i am making today first point i made about the structure the second point i am making today is 
For example, if you talk about ways of handling stress and if you talk about the famous strategies that are already there, then that's one more idea. But if you had adapted something new, then it is a new idea. There are thousands of talks, but some talks are branded as the best talks because that particular talk has one new idea. So the second point I am trying to make is, what is your idea? Why is your idea new? So bring newness in your presentation called as new fangled ideas. Okay, new fangled ideas. So that is very important in your presentation to make it more successful, to make it captivating, to make it mesmerizing, to make your audience riveted, to make your audience glued to their seat. So I hope I have made my two points clear. Have I? Yes, sir. Okay. So the second point is have a new idea to communicate. Now moving on to the third point. This is what Nancy says. Let me come to Nancy's research. This is the essence of Nancy research. Nancy's research. Now, the, the, the spark line for great presentation. This is the structure. Now, see, during her talk, what is the current state? In what way it could be better? Okay, then call for adventure. Call for action from the audience. What are you doing to change your situation? Every day you are struggling. What are you doing to change your situation? That is called as the call for action. Make them think. Are they taking any steps to improve their current? Then again, maybe another incident. If your talk is big, maybe if your talk is 20 minutes, take another instance. What is the current state of situation? Two, what could be done to improve that? What are the actions that they are taking? Again, bring down your talk. Again, give one more example and again re-emphasize your point. What could be done? Like it was, it, likewise, it goes on and on depending on the length of your presentation, whether it is a five-minute talk or a two-minute talk, people will be interested to listen to you. Actually, people will be interested not when we communicate message, not when it is descriptive, not when it is factual, not when it is scientific, not when your presentation is, uh, you know, spiced with a lot of visuals, not because there is humor, but only when you connect, only when you share small, small, small stories. But since you are going to give a five minute talk, follow one structure. What is the current state of affairs? Two, what could be done to improve the situation? Finally, call for action. Okay, what is the action that they can take to change their situation? So, in the past 20 minutes, I am dinning only one central message. And that central message can be distilled in three sentences. Sentence number one, what is the current state of affairs about your topic? Sentence number two, what could be done to improve that situation? And three is... What is the action that they have to take? What are the practical tips that you will give to make the situation better? And Nancy terms this scientific strategy and she has delivered even a TED talk called as the Sparkline Presentations. Please do go and watch that talk. It's, it's such a, a wonderful talk. You will take a lot out of that talk after you watch because I am not touching anything about uh, the, the scientific aspects of the talk because it will be like repeating what Nancy says. So please, please go and watch it yourself. Okay, so these are the important points that I would like to make about the structure of a great talk. Let me emphasize what I said. Now, can Anna please read these lines? End your talk. How should we actually end your talk? Can you please read, Anna? Yes, sir. Yeah. End your talk with explaining how the world is going to be with your idea adapted, with everyone believing how you believe. This can be very powerful. Yes. Thank you very much, Anna. Now, I will just give you a suggestion. Go and watch any TED Talks. You can watch hundred of te hundreds of TED Talks. And if you look at all the talks, 
the speaker will do exactly what Nancy says here. The speaker will end in this way. They will end the talk by explaining how your idea could be adapted. How you convince others by making them believe what you believe. And that is the essence of all talks. If I believe something and if I make you believe what I need to believe, I mean, that is called as a powerful talk. But some people don't do that. They want others to make them believe and they, they kind of uh, give a very sloppy presentation because those presentations are all kind of, you know, being in a very preaching or, a, a, or, or in a style where you are giving them descriptive information. So that, that's a very beautiful idea. End your talk with explaining how the world is going to be when your idea is adapted with everyone believing what you believe. Very, very powerful. And how can you do that? And how can you do that? You can do that in this way. Okay. Now, look at this slide. How can you do that? Same uh, ideas that is shared, but different new information. But Yashmita is in a public place. She can't read. Can I uh, once again ask Anna to please read out what is below the structure, like bits of stories. Yes. Those two uh, aspects, please read, Anna. Bits of stories that create another sense of interest and rhythm so that you do not overwhelm people with information. Yeah. The last tip is to give your audience tools that can help them to understand everything you just said. So they will become procreate and share your idea that you had from the very beginning. Thank you very much, Anna. So this, this sums up our lecture today. What do you do by the end to the audience when you finish? How do you call them to action? You will call them to action not by propagating something, not by dinning your ideology, but by giving them practical tools. These are the tools. I did these things. It worked for me. You try that. It will work for you. How many days it, it took for me to bring the transformation? It took, say, about uh, you know uh, 20 days for me to bring that transformation in your life. Try that. It will work for me. Not because it will work out for you as well, but these are practical tools that will work out for everybody. So that kind of tools, what are the tools that you are going to provide by the end of your talk is what Nancy propagates in order to give messages that resonate with your audience. So even after your message is delivered, your message, <coughs> excuse me, should actually resonate with your audience and ultimately we discussed that in our previous lectures know your primary audience and accordingly design your presentation now i would like to give you a tip now probably anna might have planned a talk yashmita would have planned a talk jeffrey would have planned a talk and they might find their talk truly appealing but please do discuss with your close buddies and ask them, do you find this topic appealing? Do you find that it has a new message? Probably your friend says, not so impressive. Ask another friend. That friend says, okay, it's, I find this impressive. Ask another friend. And okay, not so impressive. Then change your topic. So please find by yourself, by talking to the audience, by talking to your age group, whether your idea will appeal. Okay. Now, Ask about these core questions. What are the key issues of your audience? Are you choosing topic to address their key issues? Two, why should they care about your talk? Three, why is it important to them? All these things do not matter. Only one thing matters. And that one thing that matters is, that one thing that matters is, let me actually type that out. Okay. This is this one sentence. This is the bottom line. This is the bottom line. How can you help them to transform their lives? 
and almost all ted talks are are based on this ideology that i was discussing with you for the past you know uh, 20 to 25 minutes i am sure that if you take these tools and apply you will be able to deliver quite a great talk so uh, i'm sure that you would have uh, found this talk useful and most importantly i feel that i have delivered this talk at the right time because you're all preparing your ted talks right you're all uh, yes. reflecting on your ted talks and perhaps you might 